All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio, reimagining radio in the information age. Hey, today we have a new release of DigiPi, DigiPi 2.0. It's an amateur radio data transceiver hotspot. All of your favorite modes uh, on your phone or Wi-Fi or tablet device. Let's build it this time on KM6 LYW Radio. Yeah. All right. All right. Welcome back. Yeah, I know that's a repeat, but I don't think I got it right last time. All right. Let's build a DigiPi. We're going to do it quickly. You're going to be amazed and confused. Mostly just confused, but let's build a DigiPi. All right. Let's get the stuff we need for DigiPi. First of all, an SD card image. You guys are familiar with these. There's probably one on your phone. Then I want to get you to go out to digipi.org and click on download DigiPi. Now it is going to prompt for a username or password. Um, there's a link down here to go to patreon.com slash km6lyw. Um, I use Patreon to provide the username and password. Uh, it's really a way for me to give something tangible back to the supporters of the channel. So I really appreciate it. Anything in the H in the Patreon bucket helps guys and gets you access to this. And then you'll download and get that password. You'll download the DigiPi SD card image. And it's going to be a file name called digipi 20one And you save that to anywhere on your PC. I'm just going to put it in the temp folder here. And we are saving that. Downloading. It's a few gigs. You know, it might take a little while. Depends on, on the speed of your internet connection. All right, now I've got the zip file here. Now for, this is, depends on what operating system you're using. So if you're using Microsoft Windows, uh, you can use something called Bellina Etcher. Okay, it looks just like this when you're running it. I can't demonstrate this because I don't have Microsoft Windows, but it looks just like this. You select that zip file when you run Bellina Etcher, and then you select which drive you want to send it to. So you're going to have like a, an SD card burner device, or maybe you just have a slot in your PC. And you can use Bellina Etcher to burn the image to the SD card. Don't just drag and drop the zip file to the card. That isn't going to work. You got to use something like Bellina Etcher. And this is free. Uh, there's something equivalent for Mac OS. And of course, if you're on Linux, there is a simple cryptic command called DD um, that'll lay out this the uh, software image to this SD card. All right, now that we've got our SD card burned with the DigiPi software image, um, we need to get the other rest of the stuff. So I'm going to suggest a Baofeng radio here only because it's cheap. This isn't the best radio, guys. It's not a good receiver, uh, but it'll make a pretty good client. Transmit is just fine at 5 watts. Definitely get a different antenna, or maybe, preferably an external antenna, since we're going to be doing a lot of VHF operations here. Once you have that $23 amateur radio, um, get the Raspberry Pi. Um, make sure you get one with the headers on it. See the, all these pins? Um, because we're going to put a cool little screen on there. Okay, that's these little screens. These are only like 12 bucks. Um, so pretty cheap for a screen. In fact, they're so cheap, you actually have to buy two. So we have our Pi, our screen. Um, you can optionally get um, like a kit for a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 wireless. Don't get the Zero, get the Zero 2 wireless. It has this little silver chip on it. The old Raspberry Pi does not have that silver chip and it's just too old to be useful. What's cool about this kit is you have this USB OTG cable with micro USB and a USB adapter and even a, a HDMI adapter and heatsink. Um, so this is a little more, you know, with all that stuff like $30. I know $30 for a full blown computer. Okay, last and certainly not least, we need some sort of radio interface face adapter, some way to connect our radio to a Raspberry Pi, and it really depends on the radio. Since we're using a Baofeng here, I'm going to suggest the AIOC all-in-one cable. About 30 bucks, we've got one here. It's got two prongs here to plug into your radio, and then a USB port here so you can connect it to your Raspberry Pi. Now, if you've got a different kind of radio, we have a bunch of different radio adapters that DigiPi supports. Um, you know, this could be the DigiRig Mobile, the DigiPi Hat, DRA Zero Hat. Uh, Steve's got a new Toad's DI adapter. Um, or just a, a USB-based radio, like an ICOM 705, in which case you'd select USB-connected radio when you initialize your DigiPi. Um, another thing that I want to mention is the ferrite bead. Get, one, get these ferrite beads, put them on every single cable, try and get two passes through if you can. This is the USB adapter cable for the DigiPi. It came in that little kit that I just showed you, and you can see I at least got two passes through this. If you do use a USB cable, try and not make it a multiple of two meters or some factor of two meters. So we really got to keep RF off of those cables. Okay, we've got all, all our parts. First thing we're gonna do is take our SD card image that we just burned and put it into our Raspberry Pi Zero 2 wireless with the header option on there. Again, $18. 
All right, software's installed, no problem. Now we've got this case. A lot of people ask about this case. It's actually made by Vilros, V-I-L-R-O-S. Um, a little finicky. Snaps right in place. And we put on this little guy here. I like the clear one, because I, I think it just looks cool. All right, cases together. Now, I make sure you get the little screen, okay? This is only $12, guys. Don't get cheap on me. It's like the coolest part. And then you put that on the left side of the headers, not the right side. Make sure it's lined up there. All right, screen, Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi, the computer is built. We're done. Now we got to hook up our radio. So this Raspberry Pi has a USB port right here. It's a micro USB, so you need one of these little OTG adapters, okay? It has micro USB on the Pi end and then uh, USB input, type A input right here. We're going to plug that in with the proper polarity. All right, got it. And now we're going to take our regular old USB to USB-C cable here and plug that into the adapter. That's it. So we got USB-C hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. Now we're going to take our AIOC device, which has the, the K pins, and simply plug in the USB adapter there. And then we're going to take our venerable bow thing. We take this, plug those K pins right into the side of that, and we're done. That's it. DigiPi is built. Hardware is done. Software is in the unit. <laughs> we're ready to rock. Let's boot this up. All right, let's apply power and initialize the DigiPi and start operating. <laughs> I just plugged in the power right here. I don't know if you guys can see this. So the power is the, it's easy to confuse the USB port and the power adapter. So the power is on the end and the USB is in the middle. I just powered it up and DigiPi is booting. Um, it takes a couple of minutes and you can see a little boot screen there. And then we're going to find it uh, as a Wi-Fi hotspot and uh, we're going to set up home Wi-Fi. All right, once it's finished booting, uh, it's gonna say DigiPi Hotspot on the screen. Now I wanna take your phone or anything that has Wi-Fi capabilities and we're gonna to connect to it as a hotspot. So we're gonna pull this down. I said we're gonna pull this down, then we're gonna hold down Wi-Fi. This is an Android phone. And what you're gonna see is a hotspot called DigiPi right here. And the password, you're gonna click on it and connect to it. The password is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, lowercase. A through J, lowercase. This phone isn't going to prompt for it because I've already done that. I've already entered it and it remembered the password. So now we are connected to DigiPi. Very first thing we want to do is go visit a website called 10.0.0.5. No, it's not just a clever name. And your phone's going to complain that there's no internet there because we're connected to a hotspot. So connect only this time is probably a good idea there. So 10.0.0.5 and we are going to see the DigiPi management interface. This is entirely web-based. All you need is your web browser. So here we are. Um, I would wouldn't operate just yet. What I want you to do is click on Wi-Fi down here um, and we're going to connect to our home Wi-Fi and mine's SSID lacks imagination and you guys are all going to get my Wi-Fi password here. <laughs> or maybe not. I'm going to hit submit here and it's going to say Wi-Fi settings updated and restart. So I'm going to click a restart and you'll see over here uh, the DigiPi uh, status screen is going to be telling you what it's doing at all times and it says it's restarting. Um, it's also telling us that uh, once it restarts and is on our home Wi-Fi you can access it as a website again but it's going to be called DigiPi or digipi.local. So visit one of those two sites and uh, it'll pull up the DigiPi uh, web admin interface but it'll be on your home network this time. Okay, we can see it's on our home Wi-Fi now because we see an actual numeric IP address down here and it has a URL called http colon slash slash digipi. That's the site you want to visit right now. So we know it's on our home network. All right, let's go to digipi.local. I always put a trailing slash on there too. I don't know, better luck that way. Officially, that's, that's how URLs work. And it's actually loading the DigiPi web management interface here. Um, I wouldn't operate just yet because we don't have your call sign or your location or your QTH, none of that's configured. So I know it's tempting to start operating, but down here there's a really important link called initialize. In fact, it's in green. Uh, we click on initialize and this is where we enter all of our information like our call sign, win link password. So I'm going to tear through that right now. Um, maybe I'll video edit this, make this even faster. Um, it will remember, like your browser keeps the stuff cached, which is pretty cool. So you zero it out and then it's in the browser cache. I'm going to do my grid square. Um, I am seeing it CM98. Now your, uh, your latitude and longitude you can locate here. There's links over here to help you find those things. Um, 
I am going to select this one. This is because this is mine. Got to stop double clicking. All right, my longitude is negative 120 because I'm in California. Um, I don't have a GPS device, so I'm not going to touch this. Uh, my AX.25 node pass, change that to whatever you want. Um, the default mode can be whatever service you want. Maybe you want it to be a Digipeter or just fire up WSJTX or something. Um, I'm just going to have it boot into standby mode, and then I'll select a boot uh, once it boots what I want. Uh, your screen type, uh, we're using the small 240 by 240 screen, so we're going to use that as the default. Um, you can use the bigger one, the 9486, which I recommend. I don't recommend the ILI 9341. It just has poor viewing angles. So the bigger the little screen, uh, one's like for the Pi 5, one's for the Pi Zero. So the small one's 240 by 240. That's what you're looking at there. Uh, large display. So if you're using this on a PC or a large tablet, go ahead and click large display. I'm not though. And then we need to select our radio interface. Uh, this is the important part. So I know we just talked about the AIOC, so we're going to select that. Um, but if you have a really expensive radio like a Yaesu 991 or ICOM 70 or something all you need is a USB cable okay and you'd select USB connected radio then you enter your rig number device file and baud rate you can see down here what the device files were that were tech detected um, it actually sees an AIOC all in one cable um, but if you had like an ICOM connected it would tell you the device file for that ICOM for example so we're going to select AIOC now the very next thing we're going to do is click on initialize and this is going to make DigiPy yours so it's going out and configuring all of the little files with all of your information and <laughs> there are literally hundreds of changes and dozens of files um, now it says changes applied and we're going to go ahead and restart okay so what i like to do from the initialize page now that we made sure digipy has restarted it actually shows the url on the screen there is like you can just click on digipy up here and it'll take you to the home page that's kind of a quick tip because uh, you don't want to hit reload, otherwise I'll try and resubmit the forum. All right, so now we, we can operate. Let's do some operations. I'm going to do something real simple here. DigiPy will do all kinds of different modes. All the APRS packet modes you can think of. Uh, it'll do AX.25 networking. There's a bulletin board on there. There's a group chat server. It's going to do SSTV, JS8, call, slow scan TV, uh, WSJTX. Um, you can do email on this. So there's an email server, email client if you want to use WinLink email. Uh, but right now, for just the sake of time, um, I I'm going to do APRS packet radio um, since this is just a VHF UHF transceiver. Um, I'm going to set this radio to 144.39 megahertz in the United States. Okay, in Europe it's going to be 144.8. And then all I'm going to do is click on APRS TNC and iGate up here at the top one. And that's going to turn it into a TNC. Um, and this is a TNC you could use with APRS, Droid, or Woad. Um, this has Bluetooth capabilities, um, so it works just like the Mobile Link D in that regard. Well, obviously, it does a whole lot more. So it, you can see it's in DigiPy TNC mode. It says right there on the screen what's going on. If you don't have a screen, you can actually click on screen down here, and it will display what's on the screen in your web browser. So that's kind of cool. But don't get cheap on me. Get the screen. It's only 12 bucks. All right. So anyways, you can see the screen in your web browser, too. All right, so the DNC and iGate is running. So now what I also want to do is, I, you know, APRS isn't just for position reporting. It's for chatting. It's like text messaging. You know, you got you to do text messaging over APRS. That's really the cool part, and I think a lot of people overlook that. Um, so I just clicked on next to APRS web chat, and that's going to start a, uh, a texting interface just like what your iPhone would use, okay? And I'm going to go down here and click on web chat, and that's exactly what you're going to see. And we're going to see if we can send an SMS message to my phone, uh, via RF and then back over and then back from the phone to um, uh, back to the DigiPi oh, 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 from cellular to RF. So let's, uh, there's a call sign out there called SMS. Uh, Dana, uh, Steve Phelps has put this together. Thank you. I'm going to set the APRS path to wide 1 1 and uh, you can put anything you want here. It could be any phone number. I don't know if I can zoom this in anymore. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Uh, I know this is small, so it could be any uh, the app percent and any phone number, okay? Um, but I have set up an alias for my phone number, so I don't have to give it out to everyone called CL. So at CL and say, this is a SMS message or message from RF to mobile, exclamation point, and then I'm going to hit send. And you can see it works just like your iPhone, right? <laughs> or, or your Android SMS device. Um, you notice I just got a message on my phone. This is an SMS message, right? How cool is that? Um, so I can actually uh, reply also. This is the coolest part. Um, let's pull up our texting interface. And here it is. This is a message from RF to mobile. And then I can say, this is a reply 
from uh, mobile to RF. All right, now you notice the radio isn't connected to any, there's no, you don't need any internet to do this at all. This is all over RF and it's using infrastructure that's here, APRS infrastructure that's in, it's in my, it's in my region. So I'm going to send that message here. I'm going to close my uh, SMS thing and get back to the DigiPi browser. And what we will see is a text coming back. And sure enough, there it is on DigiPi. So we went, uh, we did full duplex. We sent a, an SMS text message over RF to a call sign to, called SMS. And then uh, we sent it back from our phone and we actually see it right here. Uh, the one thing you'll notice is a little thumbs up. A thumbs up means it was acknowledged that there, the, the destination radio called SMS uh, actually got the message. So that's the ACK packet coming back. So you know they got it. Um, additionally, make sure you send your position now and then. Um, this is going to send the GPS coordinates that you entered when you initialize. That way the system knows where you are and it knows kind of how to route messages over RF. Um, so that we just sent an SMS message uh, to our phone. Really practical stuff. Um, so all of these other modes... Um, <sighs> I'll let you explore them. Um, there's some of them are self-explanatory. I've got videos on all the other ones. Um, we can do WSJTX and all that. In fact, it doesn't really make sense on VHF to run WSJTX FT8, but it does in fact uh, display in your browser and you can use your screen and your keyboard that you already have in your pocket. So we can see WSJTX FT8 has started. And once you know it started and it's turned green, you can click on the little launch link down here called WSJTX. And it's going to actually display WSJTX in our web browser. Um, so this is your screen. You notice there's no monitor or keyboard hooked up to, to this, right? This isn't a half-baked computer project. This is a Internet of Things a radio appliance, uh, uh, the DigiPi is. And in all of these modes, you already have a screen and keyboard in your pocket, right? Why would you want something else um, or something heavy that you have to drag up to the summit? So here it is. The WSJTX is running. It takes a little bit to start on the Zero Two wireless. I mean, if you have a Pi 5 or something, you know, it probably makes sense. Um, I don't have this configured yet because WSJTX doesn't make sense on VHF, but uh, there it is. Uh, this is WSJTX running on your phone, and you can configure it for your radio right there. All right, cool. We got modes up and running. We built a DigiPi. All right, I know what you're thinking. Great, Craig. How is this different than DigiPi 1.9? This is a brand new DigiPi 2.0. What's the difference with 2.0? Um, this is kind of a evolutionary upgrade rather than revolutionary. Um, what we did was upgrade the underlying operating system, which is which is a big deal, to Raspberry Pi OS Trixie. Uh, it just came out two months ago, so it's a brand new OS. Brand new Linux kernel. Um, a lot of code had to be rewritten to accommodate a lot of the GPIO stuff, LEDs and push to talk. The brand new version of Direwolf, which is the sound modem and TNC software, really uh, cutting edge version 1.8. Uh, the display bar driver had to be rewritten. And your favorite apps like WSJTX, a JS8 call, FL Digi, QS, those are all the, the newer versions now. There's a newer version of Hamlib on there, which is a library that supports different radios. So uh, uh, newer radios are supported. In fact, you can see if your radio, your USB cable based radio is supported out there. Uh, the latest version of APRS Web Chat is on here now. Um, we've been working on that for a, a good long while. WB4BOR, shout out there. Um, a lot of bug fixes are in here. Uh, I did some work on the bulletin board. Um, not only are there video games like Zork on the AX.25 bulletin board, but there's also group chat rooms. Um, so you can create a chat room and then everyone can log in through your bulletin board and talk to each other in chat rooms all over AX.25 and radio. A newest version of node services. I'm just going through all of this stuff here. Uh, the other thing is the support of a lot more uh, radio interface adapters. Um, I know we talked about these. We just use the AIOC, but there's a lot of other great adapters out there. Uh, depending on how your radio uh, is built, um, you can get a different kind of radio adapter. And check out my videos. Um, I talk about these radio adapters all the time. We are not twisting wires together anymore. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out uh, with me. And patrons, scrolling there on the left, um, there's actually too many to scroll now. This is really humbling. Uh, thank you so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. It really keeps me motivated and to get this working and to make data modes relevant in the information age. Hey, my name is Craig, amateur radio call sign KM6LYW. I'm in California and I'm clear. <laughs>